Welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts and the business side, but also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Today's sponsored Spotlight episode features Jakob Kamilniak, an active BAYC member and founder of Fanadize and the Fancy Bears Metaverse, where you can hang out with artists, top athletes, influencers, celebrities, and Nobel Prize winners. In the Meta Club, you can join concerts, pool parties, and play tennis with your favorite creators. Every year, they are hosting the Fancy Bears annual party, where holders can win things like a Ferrari, rare sneakers, and NFTs. Jakob is co-founder and owner of a 20 million euro e-commerce company, creator of many fashion brands, and an influencer marketing specialist. Jakob, welcome to Edge of NFTs. Great to have you here. Great to be here. Great pleasure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Well, let's dive right in. We're really excited about uh, what you're up to. Uh, we know that uh, Fanadize and, and Fancy Bears is where you can hang out with artists, influencers, and Nobel Prize winners, like we said. Can you tell some more of the story behind Fanadize and you know the Fancy Bears <laughs> metaphors? Let's get that background. Well, definitely. I mean, uh, together with Bartek, who was supposed to be here today, but, um, but he didn't make it, unfortunately. Uh, we, and by the we, way, we I, by the way, I can say for the listeners, I yeah. met Bartek when we were in yeah. Miami, and this guy is quite yeah. an energetic character. Um, I, I know that I met him, but also probably a million other people met him. <laughs> He's a very Definitely. social guy, a very active guy, and obsessed with uh, the Bored Apes, um, a really dedicated fan of that brand as well. So yeah, go ahead. We're, we're sad he can't be here today. Yeah, he's uh, easy to recognize uh, with his uh, board baby Yacht Club match and Vice is rocking all the time. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we basically teamed up to make um, something um, connected to influencers and the, something global to utilize all the experience that we, we, we gathered in the previous years. And this is how we came up with Fanadise. Um, like, this is our like main company that focuses on NFT. Uh, so we started uh, January last year, where uh, like this NFT craze like just started to, to boil, mostly because of people that time and the top shot were a thing in January, February. So we decided to try and connect NFTs with influencers, uh, add some utilities to it. And yeah, we made lots of exciting things uh, throughout the year because uh, we were working on 3D scanning. We 3D scanned many influencers into the metaverse. We minted NFTs to these 3D scans, sold them to the followers. We even minted NFTs of uh, digital emotions, like digital love, and we sold it for 250K as well, uh, one of the influencers. Uh, yeah, we minted NFTs to autographs, and we just tried to make interesting projects with, with influencers. And this is how we gather experience. This is how we gain some recognition in the NFT space as well. This is why we traveled the world. We were to, to New York, Dubai, to Miami. And yeah, this is uh, finally we came up with an idea that we should make our own uh, PFP NFT project. And this is how Fancy Bears were born. Yeah, beautiful. Well, very, uh, very succinct and uh, information packed telling of the story um, of what you've been up to. And I know from um, talking to Bartek as well, you had this interesting opportunity where you had an somehow had an inside look at kind of the general NFT trend and maybe the activity that was going on in the West, like in the United States. Um, and at the same time, you had this sort of market where you basically were the NFT experts right like you you could basically transfer things that you found were, were um, exciting and successful um anywhere else and just bring it to the european market and what an awesome strategy to be able to implement yeah we didn't you know just uh pop up where when pfp became very popular we were uh tracking this trend actively and trying to make something interesting 
firstly, we're like implementing NFTs on Polygon, on Binance Smart Chain, on Ethereum mainnet. We have our own technology, a big team of developers. Like, there's like Fanadise, a 30 people um, startup, NFT startup, and this is this is the, our approach was uh, was to like learn as as much as possible. This is why we also became members of Board Ape Yacht Club, and this is where we actually felt this trend when it became you know, so so visible for us. When you go to the States, when you see all the people excited with NFTs, everyone, and in Europe, people don't have a clue what, what, what uh, Board Ape Yacht Club is. You go to blockchain conferences, and th these are not like, crypto culture conferences those are guys who do something technically correlated with blockchain right but they barely ever heard about board ab club and a few right. and stuff so yeah we realized the potential and we decided why don't we become a board ab club of europe and try to make something here using all our connections experience and try to make some interesting pop culture phenomenon but more for the european people and this is what we're basically doing right now yeah, and that's a theme that we've seen over and over again in the podcast. And, and uh, you know, you liken the trend to a character like Steve Jobs, right? Like you had all these kind of nerds working on computers in their, you know, back room garages and basements and getting nerdy out about it. And, and they saw the potential and they were excited about it. But in order to, you know, bring technology like this to the masses, get people excited about it. You, you know, you've got to in, in you've got to integrate pop culture and creativity and all these things. And and like you said, you go to these conferences where where you have the you know super smart people, uh, but they can, haven't quite made the connections yet to the rest of the world. So actually, that leads me to the next question: Is like, you know, so when did you first encounter? NFTs was this like a few years ago with crypto kitties um have you been into blockchain for a while when, what was it your first exposure to NFTs well honestly i i'm in the crypto space since uh, 2017 uh, so i was aware of um, all the trends that were happening in the space but i was only a trader and observer i was passive I mean, being a, an active founder of a crypto startup and being someone who just watches it from the sidelines, those are two completely different things. So we um, we like consciously jumped into the crypto and NFT, like I said, a year ago. Um, January, February, this is where we started to build something uh, actively, where we like uh, pushed a little bit aside all the other businesses that we are working on like the agency, the e-commerce, those things, they, they just run right now without us. And, uh, and yeah, and uh, this is where we actually started to discover how, how different it is to, to, to create something in this space rather than um, just watch it from the sidelines. And uh, as soon as we discovered how popular the NFTs are becoming in the United States, because of people, because of NBA Top Shot, which is like completely American phenomenon, obviously. Uh, we, like I said, we tried to find our own path. Uh, but yeah, I think from the start, we, we, we knew that NFT is something for us because we are guys who always work closely with like, like people. Uh, it's rather like pop culture. It's something that we feel very well. We you know, created so much materials for, for social media, all the like clothes and manufacture are also like a pop culture phenomenon. And NFTs, for, for, they are like technology, but PFP NFTs, those are this like on the verge of tech and pop culture. And uh, basically creating your own NFT PFP project is like creating a brand. And this is why we are super pumped. And uh, you can make so many exciting things. Like we are creating, we created a song. We are doing an animated series. Uh, like working with those brands, doing like whatever comes to your mind, collaborating with everyone. This is, I, I love it, man. I, yeah. I simply love it. <laughs> That's cool. And, you know, we love this story, um, you know, that so many people in the space have of just being willing to jump in and take something new by the the reins and, and you know, make it work and be part of the co-creation of it. I'm, you know, just acknowledging that you have your your shirt there that says future on it. Right. <laughs> and you've got it nicely <laughs> framed right here in the uh, in the uh, phone, uh, the screen there. So, yeah, that's awesome. Because yeah. I had like 
five interviews today after what we did with uh, NFTs, uh, like journalists, they, uh -huh. they just don't let us work. <laughs> They're just calling us all the time. So today uh, it looks like my third podcast. Uh, so I decided to take my future future switch. <laughs> perfect. I love it. So, um, you know, kind of speaking of the integrations and, and collaborations that you guys could do, um, you do have some collaborations planned with big brands. You've even set aside some of your collection for those collaborations. Um, what actions are you planning uh, for Fancy Bears community in the future and, and who's getting integrated? Well, there are things that we can't announce yet uh, because they are on our, on our roadmap. What was already announced and what is going on is definitely our DAO. Uh, so we set up a DAO not only for governance, but like 30% of the volume, uh, turn, like the volume revenue from the OpenSea goes to the DAO. All the lotteries that we'll be doing yearly, all the things that we receive, for, like we received 20 pairs of boxing gloves signed by Floyd Mayweather. And we oh, wow. just put them we put them into DAO. Like Floyd Mayweather is like part of uh, Fancy Bears, is an honorary member. So uh, those things they like go to the DAO, and then um, uh, people decide, community decides what's what's uh, what what will happen with with all these funds, with all this stuff. And yeah, there's like free merchandising for every holder. Uh, uh, if you hold a bear for six months, you get a free hoodie. Um, like the same as Bartek rocked, I mean, you know, he, he rocked t-shirts in Miami because it's stuffy, but the rest of the time he, he rocks hoodies with all over printed um, uh, either ape or, or bear right now. And this is something that we're giving away. Uh, so there's a lottery and uh, apologies, obviously, but lots of stuff is going on. Like I already told you that we are doing the animated series. We are working with basically the biggest uh, production companies in this part of Europe to make that for us. So we want to create something sustainable and the song uh, that we will mint NFTs to this song. And these NFTs will also be part of the DAO. So every bear will be an owner of our song, uh, All the Girls Love Fancy Bears. And yeah, those things are super exciting because they are like edgy. This is, this is like avant-garde. People are not doing this. And crypto, right. it allows you to do that sort of stuff. People get, are excited and want to be a part of it. And, uh, and yeah, I think we have so many, we have so many ideas that come to our minds every single day, but you can't do anything at once, but yeah, like working with different metaverses, uh, maybe some sort of game as well. All the things are happening around. We try to make them all happen at once and just make Fancy Bears the most exciting project in this space. Nice. And how do I get the Ferrari? What is the process there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's a lottery. If you if you if you hold the bear, we just make a snapshot, and then out of the snapshots, we make uh, you know, work together with Chainlink, so they richer the the the, the randomness was uh, everything was handled properly. So working together with Chainlink, we will we will run this lottery, and whoever wins will win. Excellent. I'm looking forward to it. Um, and then how about the, so the royalty system, right? You did explain a little bit about that. I just want to make sure we cover it. So you're basically saying, you know, it sounds like with a song that's happening and, and in essence with other things that come to the community, there's sort of like, even if it's not a sort of like a tokenized royalty, it could just be the fact that it's owned by the community. Is that how you see royalties moving forward? Are there any other plans for providing royalties to the uh, community? Yeah, not everything can be in crypto because if you put our song on Spotify and Apple Music, if they are if there are royalties and there are always royalties when 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 people play your song, these that this money is being paid paid up in like in dollars or euro or, or other currency. So it's it's not in crypto. Uh, I think we'll keep just the cash on on our bank account. But then uh, DAO decides what happens. If uh, maybe we should make another lottery, maybe we should buy some NFTs. That maybe we should do some, some some charity. There are a lot of ideas that uh, maybe, maybe we should help some projects, uh, like lots of ideas that uh, that will be proposed uh, for 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 the community to vote. Uh, so we shall see. This is obviously also very interesting stuff that this community, that's an actual community, because we have every every single project. They say they have an amazing community, <laughs> but we really do, and these people love us. Like recently on the public sale, there was a Discord hack, 
unfortunately one of the admins were hacked so uh um, the scammers they basically um flooded our discord with fake links so uh 90 people were scammed but we decided to um to reimburse these people uh, we gave them away eighty thousand uh, dollars. It happened uh, in the past three days, and people were like were amazed, and they were so proud to be a part of this community. And, and yeah, this is this actually works in crypto. You you can't have a project without a community. We are perfectly aware of it, and we do our best to you know to build an amazing one. Very cool. And you gave an example there of just something that helps with that community building. Just just sort of handling any issues that arise in a way that people can be excited and happy about you kind of delivering on your support to the community. Uh, can you tell us anything else just about, uh, especially being part of the BAYC as well, things that you've learned about the community building strategies? I know we mentioned, um, you know, partnering with other NFT projects and things like that. But wh what do you think has been, um, you know, some of the secrets to your success in building a, a really powerful community? Helping each other, I think. Uh, I've never seen such a helpful and open community as Bordel Gach Club. Basically, uh, I maybe like 30% of the success of Fancy Bears is our presence in Bordel Gach Club community. All the apes that helped us, all the apes that are like great friends of us, being our advisors. And, you know, if you need something, you just ask people, know people, they will tell you who you should work with, who, who should run your ads, who should make your contract. Uh, he, helps with, he helps you with this, he helps you with that. And this community is super open and uh, yeah, people trust each other. And uh, even because, for instance, Bartek lost his ape, uh, his ape was stolen. And uh, like five minutes later, he was informed by the community members. And suddenly, like lots of people wanted to help. Um, so the scammer was tracked. We, 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 we all, all the map of the world was created. The report, forensic report was created. The FBI um, report was, uh, was created as well by some people that wanted to help us. And we just, we just were there and people wanted to do this because they wanted to, to be helpful. Uh, ultimately, we had to buy that ad back. Maybe we'll um, uh, get this fund back. Just an, an anecdote, sad anecdote, because it's like 50. Um, mm -hmm. but, 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 but yeah, uh, this, is, this is one of the examples of how this community proves to be, I think, the best community on the internet right now. Right. There's so much power in community and just, just the fact that we're all getting together to collaborate on something as opposed to sort of disagree and argue and have divisiveness is powerful in and of itself, right? Um, so that's really beautiful to see that gaining traction in what you guys are doing. You mentioned, uh, you know, Floyd Mayweather, are there, you know, who else is involved in this community, these kind of celebrities that we've heard about? Uh, we obviously worked with uh, many American uh, celebrities. There's also like Jay Lovares or uh, or like many other a little bit smaller than him. But we did lots of hype in Europe. Uh, for instance, in the country where we come from, we are like super well connected and uh, we know all the influencers, all the celebrities. And um, they basically they came to us because they were so hyped by the things that we we're doing. And they wanted us to, they just wanted to have a bear. And they even wanted to pay for the bear. Like influencers paying for stuff means that you are actually doing something really well. <laughs> and this is what happens here. We created some you know, honorary bears for like lots of influencers here, here in Pol Poland and Central Eastern Europe. And these people were, were super pumped. And uh, they, were, yeah. they, were, they were super pumped. And like all, all the, like in the past, week i assure you in poland everyone is talking about what what we, perf what we performed with fancy bears with all the influencers that, that changed their profile pictures uh we we have to work our asses off to explain what nfts are why it's not a scam why it doesn't mean that we didn't sell jpgs we said we sold nfts which is something we have to we have to explain educate right. Uh, this is why, like, so, so all the interviews um, from all the magazines, like obviously Forbes and that sort of stuff, because suddenly everyone's excited and they don't understand. And it's very hard to explain it, actually. Even if you explain, people don't get it. 
uh, they need to jump in, mm -hmm. get their first NFT, then they're super excited. And yeah, and same with, with influencers. Right. I mean, even during our conversation, I have like uh, two of very big Polish influencers congratulating us because they're still like sending us messages. Oh, wow, you guys did something amazing. And, uh, and they, they are super excited to see it. That's beautiful. Well, congratulations. I mean, it's it's all that hard work you put in. And, and even though you're feeling that things are successful, I can imagine along the way you're, you know, kind of crossing the, your fingers and really hoping for the best. There was no celebrations. Uh, we, we, after the public, we just uh, maybe one, one, one hour of uh, a little bit of rest. Then we, then we rushed to work again. <laughs> yeah, I bet. So you mentioned uh, the Board Ape Yacht Club, um, which has been super powerful for us and what you guys are doing. And, and that's really cool how much you've integrated into that community. Can you tell us about any other projects and platforms that you look to for inspiration in the NFT blockchain space? Well, definitely you have to not only analyze, but make friends with um, all the big projects like, you know, Crypto Maurice, Doodles, and... Um, and the Cool Cats, uh, Pudgy Penguins, all the other projects. Well, we, we are talking with basically every big project in the market. Uh, not only like to make business, but to make friends, to share experience, to make something together. This is why I love this space because everyone wants to connect, everyone wants to do something with you. And um, and yeah, I mean, Board ABI Club, they, they basically created this phenomenon. Um, they think maybe they they not created but they, they they moved this phenomenon more to the mainstream and, and made it so popular but other people are all the other projects are thinking of so many exciting things of the ways to communicate of how to make keep your community excited how to how to gratify them for, for being with you and we try to just keep up with them we try to like i said make friends with them learn from them help them and uh, this is uh, this is uh, it's all it's all about that sort of stuff. So so yeah, I mean, all the space is exciting. Not only Board Ape Yacht Club, both we are we are apes. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> beautiful. Um, all right. Well, I, I've just got basically one more question for you. And again, we always like to ask something like this, and that's kind of, you know, what's next, right? I mean, three, five years, ten years. That seems like a long time, but it's really interesting to to think what or to hear what people are thinking about in terms of what do you see in the future um, of NFTs or projects or platforms that you think will be around or doing something that's going to be around tomorrow? Well, you know, well, you know perfectly well that uh, the biggest uh, obstacle or maybe a challenge for crypto is to be implemented into the mainstream, even though there is some sort of like all the crypto world, it works in consensus. Uh, there is a consensus that, uh, I don't know, that NFTs, they hold some value, like it, it doesn't necessarily mean that if you put something into the metadata, you own it. There's a consensus. Um, and this consensus is not represented by, by the law most often. But I'm pretty sure that this, this law will, uh, will um, uh, keep up and uh, that NFTs will become uh, a key factor to... Uh, to distributing ownership of the internet, and they will play a big role in, uh, in like um, I, I call NFTs mostly in Polish like digital certificates of ownership, and NFTs being digital certificates of ownership are, are such a universal technology that will be used globally and for many different purposes. Obviously, we, we all need Ethereum to zero or like uh, solutions like Immutable X or Polygon. So NFTs are super cheap and super fast. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this is like the challenge for all the blockchain to to, to grow uh, its uh, effectiveness and optimize the costs. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm pretty sure that NFTs uh, beyond all is a technology that would reshape, will reshape the existing world uh, in, in so many ways. Depends yeah. on the space, or depends on the niche. So I, I'm really bullish about NFTs and such. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned certificate of digital ownership. And I think I think actually something that we're just beginning to see the implications of in these NFT projects. I think we're seeing it a little bit more in decentralized finance is that not only they, are they a digital um, certificate of ownership, but they're a smart contract or even beyond that, they're like a little supercomputer. Each NFT, you can program all sorts of you know automated functionality into them. It'd be very interesting to see 
how that all plays out as people really begin to say, well, what actually do I, can I, and do I want to do with that kind of tech? Yeah. Um, really great stuff. I'm really excited about it. Um, really happy for your guys' success and, and um, that you've, what you've built. And then what we like to do in our next segment is to get to know you a little bit better. It's a segment we okay. call Edge Quick Hitters. Um, <laughs> and you're kind of ready to roll with it. I'll explain what it is. Um, Edge Quick Hitters is a fun and quick way to get to know you better. There's 10 questions and we're looking for just a short or single or few word response. But you know, we can feel free to expand a little bit if you get the urge. So you've already given me the go ahead. Uh, you're really excited to move forward with this. So let's hit the first question. Go ahead. What is hit me. the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? Donald Dog comic books. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> I was a kid. Yeah. Now, did you get like the Huey, Louie and Dewey, like the three brother ducks? Or was it just about Donald Duck? Uh, Donald Duck. Donald Duck, definitely. In Poland, uh, in the 90s, Donald Duck was a thing. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, beautiful. Next question on the other side of that. What is the first thing you ever remember selling in your life? Oh, maybe some so something like on Polish eBay. I don't know. Maybe some books. Okay. And po is Polish eBay actually eBay or is it a Polish version of eBay? No, no, we have a Polish version of eBay, like like bro. Got it. Got eBay it. is not is not not existent in Poland. Got it. Yeah, that's always so interesting. I remember I spent a year and a half living in Peru. And the first thing that became really, you know, strangely apparent to me is that Amazon.com <laughs> did not exist in Peru. Like, whereas <laughs> when I lived in New York City, I could order anything and it'd be at my doorstep in a day. Living in Peru, I couldn't order anything. And there was no, you know, way people didn't even hardly deliver things to your doorstep. <laughs> so yeah, fascinating stuff. Um, all right, next question. What is the most recent thing that you purchased recently? Um, I think um, a sandwich and a coffee <laughs> in the morning. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Delicious. Uh, what kind of sandwich? There was like um, uh, this, I, how do you call it? You made it out of eggs and mayonnaise. You somehow mix it in, uh, in, in the, uh, in oh, the, like in the egg bagel. salad, like an egg yeah, salad, so like egg salad in the bagel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Nice breakfast. Delicious. All right. Uh, the follow up to that is what is the most recent thing you sold? Oh, it was definitely some, some clothes. I'm selling clothes like every single minute. So <laughs> I'm definitely close. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool that's cool i'm jealous I, i've done gotten to do so many things in my life but one thing i remember when i was younger i always thought it would be fun to like do fashion right and i feel like i've spent so much time with other things that my fashion skills have really diminished <laughs> but that's really cool i'm jealous um all right next uh question is what is your most prized possession um Digitally, it would be my ape. Physically, my friend. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I love it. Um, now, if you could buy anything in the world, digital, physical, service, experience, that is currently for sale, what would it be? Uh, today, a friend of mine sent me some pictures of uh, um, uh, tea, uh, tea plantations in Sri Lanka. I think I would buy a tea plantation in Sri Lanka. <laughs> hey, I love that, man. That is one of the most unique answers we've gotten. Uh, all right, next question. Yeah, one of my dreams, actually. <laughs> that's, that's, those are beautiful dreams to have. I hope you achieve that. Make sure you update us when you do. We'll make an announcement. <laughs> we actually, we've actually had, um, we ha have had guests on the show where they tell us what they would like, and we've been able to deliver it for them. So for example, we had the guy uh, from Jadu Jetpacks 
um, who started that company. Uh, and he said that he really loved Pink Floyd and he would love to have a, a like a really cool piece of Pink Floyd memorabilia. And we happen to know uh, the sax player that played with Pink Floyd, who is also like a memorabilia nut and has like a ton of it. So we were able to connect the two of them. So unfortunately Amazing. cannot connect you with this plantation, but if, if we find a way, <laughs> if we find a way, we will. Uh, all right. Next question is about passing on your personality traits. If you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation, what do you think that would be? Um, persistence? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, let's stick to that. <laughs> That's solid. All right. Next one. If you could eliminate one of your personality traits from the next generation, what would it be? Uh, that would be the the, the 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 worst side of persistence, which is persistence, which is stubbornness. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> Got to know when to let go and give up. Um, all right. Next one is. This is an easy one. I think we got a little bit of this info already, but what did you do just before joining us on the podcast? Um, I kissed my girlfriend. <laughs> that's true. I think I caught a glimpse of that in the in the side. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Catching a little bit of love in between podcast episodes. All right. Uh, next thing in, on the list here, what are you going to do next after the podcast? I think I will kiss my girlfriend again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> very, very, very nice. You've got a wonderful day planned. All right. Uh, well, that that's a great last answer um, for the podcast. Um, that pretty much covers what we want to cover today. Love to wrap it up. But before we do, I want to know where can listeners go to learn more about you and uh, the projects that you're working on? Well, we live and thrive on Twitter, so uh, <clears throat> you should uh, go to our uh, to Fancy Burst Metaverse Twitter and Discord, and uh, you should follow me and Bartek because this is where like most of the exciting things happen. We basically just we log the accounts we post as Fancy Bears, uh, Bartek posts as Bartek, I post as myself. Lots of things are going on on Instagram as well, but Twitter is native for uh, NFTs and crypto. So following us on Twitter, um, both me and Bartek and Fancy Bears Metaverse, this is the best source of information you can get. Very cool. Yeah, you guys are social media superstars. What would be your handle um, that you want to say for uh, people to go look for? We have our names and surnames. So Bartek has Bartek Sidiga. I have Jakub Hnielniak. <laughs> so Perfect. you can but but if you if you go to fancy bears metaverse our handles are in the bio so it's uh easy to find us that makes it easier i can spell fancy and bears and metaverse yeah. the easiest part <laughs> okay cool all right great well uh i think that's about time to wrap it up so i'll do our outro uh we've reached the outer limit at the edge of nfts for today um, thanks for exploring with us. We've got space for more adventurers on this starship. So invite your friends and recruit some cool strangers that will make this journey all so much better. How? Go to iTunes right now, rate us and say something awesome. Then go to edgeofnft.com to dive further down the rabbit hole. And remember, we always invite you to co-create and build with us at Edge of NFT. We're unlocking a whole new way to connect and collaborate with us through our own NFT drops, Spirit Seeds, leading to our Living Tree NFTs, which light the way to our NFT LA convention, a one-of-kind, immersive, and unforgettable experience at LA Live in Los Angeles, March 28th to the 30th. Check that out at nftla.live and move quick on our early but tickets as they are now live and moving quickly. Lastly, be sure to tune in next time for more great NFT content. And thanks again for sharing this time with us today.